Garrett, uh, fine tuning is a, a hot subject in physics now. It's been in philosophy and even in the science religion debate for several decades. Uh, from your perspective, uh, what, what is the overview? What are the implications happening here? Because obviously, fine tuning has been recruited by uh, people who would have a theological bent and it has been excoriated by those who believe that it's being used by people who have a theological bent to, to bend the physics. Yep. So basically we, we have uh, a philosophical turmoil uh, it, with uh, fine-tuning. Well, a lot of my focus uh, is really around the fact that fine-tuning is a scientific question. At its heart, there are scientific things going on here that we need to address. So when we talk about properties of the universe, the, there is no real doubt that uh, there are parameters in the universe which do appear to be very fine-tuned with regards to allowing the emergence of complexity and life in the universe. That then leads on to the reasons why we have uh, this apparent fine-tuning, and I think that's when the philosophical sort of fight begins. And you have to be very careful because some people like to even suppress or put down the scientific questions and just say they're not really that relevant. Uh, just because, because they're scared. Of because what, they're scared you know. of the philosophical implications. <laughs> right. But I think or to give the, you know, to be fair, the, the, to recognize that other people will expropriate that and exaggerate it or twist it and make it look like, for example, that is, it, it is supporting a theological view when, when it, it, it may not be. Maybe there are other alternatives. So that's why scientists are, are, are concerned that, they, that their data is not being misused. That, yes, yes, exactly. So, so myself as a scientist, I, am, I, I recognize the, the fine-tuning issues in the universe. Uh, but to me, this tells me that there must be a scientific answer, that there, there are big scientific questions that we need to ask. So my, my philosophical bent is on the that nature has a solution and somewhere buried in, if it's a multiverse or something like that, there is a natural solution to, to why uh, our universe is as it is. But at the moment, we're still at that boundary of we've identified the fine-tuning problem, but we don't really have a, a guidance what the scientific solution is, and I would say that also that, that uh, I'm not I'm not uh, wowed by the theistic solutions <laughs> either. Um, but I think that it's down that road of science that we're going to find why we have this universe that we inhabit. Are you in a position to say at least what the the alternatives are? Is there a universally exhaustive list of alternatives? If you have fine tuning, and there are some who would dispute that, but if, if we give you that there is fine tuning sufficiently, that it is um, a, a remarkable condition and, uh, as we say, cries out for explanation. Yes. If it cries out for, for explanation, what is the totality of explanations that are possible? Well, you don't know what you don't know, right? right? So, right. so at the moment, of course, everyone has this, this picture of the multiverse and that we're just one of a, a huge, almost infinite sea of universes, most dead and sterile, ours has the right properties for life. That seems to work for me, but if somebody came along tomorrow and said, actually that multiverse thing is wrong and you should have been thinking about things this way, I wouldn't be overly surprised. Uh -huh. So um, we have a direction, this is where there's an awful lot of thought, M theory, etc. But in, in string theory. In, yeah. in string theory uh, and, and notions of inflation. But I don't think it's guaranteed that we're definitely on the right track. Yeah, some would say that you, you, in a multiverse you can't use uh, a probabilistics because if you have infinities, you're comparing infinities with one infinity, another infinity, and, and you just end up with confusion. And so probabilistics in a multiverse is, uh, is, is not, you, you can't, can't use fine tuning in the way you're trying to. Except, I mean, the reason we have infinities is that we don't really have a robust mathematical picture for what a multiverse even is. We have a very rubbery kind of picture. Uh, and that's when you have infinities, you, you play around because you don't have the mathematics behind it. We need to get past this and have a true mathematical structure for what a multiverse would be. And then we can start to really address questions like probabilities. I mean, of course, the worst case scenario is we come up with our, our multiverse theory and we go through all the mathematics and we find that it's completely dead and sterile <laughs> and then we're back to square one. So we're hoping that it's going to turn out that we're going to end up with patches of life in, these, in this huge space. As a scientist working on fine-tuning, working in cosmology, do you think uh, theological kinds of uh, explanations or implications are uh, a, um, a philosophical legitimate in inference from what you've uh, discovered? That's a, that's a tricky one for me. It's, it's not the side, uh, I'd, 
I don't think that provides a solution that um, I find satisfying. I can understand why somebody would find that solution uh, you know, satisfying to themselves, but in providing an ultimate answer, we still have that question of where did the creator come from? <laughs> and that's an even bigger philosophical one. <laughs>